Hello again, I'm Matthew Gore from thewetpen.com, and when I left you in the previous video, I was about to head up to Kyoto from Osaka. But before Kyoto, I took a day trip west to Himeji Castle, which is one of the few original castles still standing, rather than a reproduction. And it was well worth the visit, but on the return trip, I stopped in at the city of Kobe. I really liked Kobe. The harbor was beautiful, and there was something that felt very much like home about the place. And it also turned out to be home to one of my favorite fountain pen shops in Japan. Just one train stop away from the main station, and a two or three minute walk into a semi-residential side street, and I found Pen and Message. In addition to being a beautiful shop, Pen and Message is a fountain pen hospital that does custom nib work. Step inside and you'll see a beautiful collection of pens for sale, but you'll also quickly find all kinds of inks. Some from Taiwan, Ferris Wheel Press, Europe, and even Noodlers. But over here by the door, I found what I was looking for. There are four different Sailor exclusive inks in vase bottles. They used to carry about 10 of them, but several were sold out. And then here in the middle of the shelf, there are three variations of a store exclusive ink, one blue called Koku, then a version with gold shimmer, and one with silver shimmer. And finally, near the checkout counter, I found this sage blue in a vase bottle. And you can see here that the box art on this one matches up with the cover art on this book which I didn't buy, unfortunately, since I don't read Japanese, but it's called Medico Penna Fountain Pen Consultation. It's a novel woven around a fountain pen nib adjuster in Kobe. The gentleman helping me in the shop described it as the story of this place, so of course I had to get the ink. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, this is a slightly greenish blue. A little greener than I expected, but it's a gorgeous color. Somehow vibrant and subdued at the same time. The color is pretty uniform across the four papers, but on the Japanese papers, we see some reddish sheen in the heavy areas. I made a quick writing sample on Irofol paper, and the ink flows really nicely. There's a modest amount of shading, and on the heaviest strokes, there's a touch of sheen. I also got a bottle of their Koku ink. I don't think that this is a Sailor ink, and there's no indication of where it's made, but I got it anyway because I really liked the shop. Let's see what color it is. Aha! This color is actually pretty similar to the sage blue that we just looked at, but it's not quite as dark. Again, this ink looks pretty much the same across all four papers, but this time there's no sheen. The next day, I began looking around Kyoto. And don't get me wrong, Kyoto is gorgeous, with endless historic buildings and temples and gardens, but it's not a great city for exclusive inks. In my research before I got there, I didn't find mention of a single one in Kyoto. On my first evening in the city, I walked down to the main Tag Stationery store, hoping for something special there. And while they had a good collection of inks, including all of their Kyoto-themed inks, there was nothing that I hadn't already seen all over Japan. Which is odd, because I had already purchased three exclusive Tag inks in other cities. Anyway, over the next three days of exploring the city, I didn't find any exclusive inks. After hiking through the Fushimi trails of Tori Gates one morning, I finally decided that I'd just go back to the Tag Stationery store and buy the corresponding ink color, Fushimi's Flaming Red. 
Here on the box, you can see the fox that stands outside the main gates. Let's see whether this ink turns out to be really similar to the red-orange of the Tory gates. Ah, that's a nice vibrant red-orange, at least when it's wet. And it is pretty similar to the red-orange of the Fushimi gates. When it's dry, I'd say that it's more red than orange, and much more red than the label on the box, but I do like the color quite a bit. On my final full day in Japan, I noticed a sign that said Angers. You might remember that when I was in Tokyo, I visited another of their stores across the street from Tokyo Station and they had a few exclusive Sailor inks in the new rectangular bottles, so I decided to check out the Kyoto shop too. And much to my surprise and delight, I found the same three Sailor exclusive inks, but these were from the old stock in vase bottles. Again, they had the dark berry-colored magenta red, a dark blue, and a mushroom brown. And since most of my other recent inks had been blues and reds, I decided to get the brown. Let's take a look. This ink is called Contarelli, which you might have already guessed refers to chanterelle mushrooms. The color appears to be a dark tan on the yellow side, sort of a camel or honey leather color. Not bad, and it's lighter than most of the browns that I own, so it's nice to get something new with this one. When I write with it, it gives me really heavy shading on this aerofoil paper. And that was it, the end of my trip. We took the bullet train to Tokyo the next day and flew back to Seattle. And I had the worst jet lag of my entire life for some reason. But when I unpacked, I was happy to discover that all of my ink bottles had traveled well, with no leaks or broken glass. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed these videos and maybe found some information that will be useful when you're traveling in Japan. I'm hoping to return to Japan again next year, and with any luck, I'll continue this series then. In the meantime, I have some new pens and some Indian inks to show you, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Enjoy your pens and inks out there, everyone, and I'll see you next time.